Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk. It's uh, getting pretty late, 12.51 a.m. Saturday night, so um, instead of partying or something, I decided to record a video blog. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's really late, so if my hair's messed up, uh, you know, what are you going to do? I think I'm going to shave my head so that I don't have to uh, comb my hair anymore. All right, so... Uh, what's the point of this video? So we've, uh, if you're on the Killer Sites uh, forum here, it's, uh, we just reskinned it. Anyway, if you're on this Killer Sites forum, you may have noticed this little thing. A new forum I put in, Beginners Ruby Programming. So yeah, that's what's happening now. Is for the first time, actually, I'm going to be producing a set of Ruby programming courses. Whatever, nothing revolutionary. There's a lot of people out there who put out these courses, but they don't put them out like I put out my courses. And the reason I'm putting them out is because the schools, uh, well, school, a couple of schools in Chicago mentioned to me that they uh, are going to be teaching Ruby in curriculum, so they needed some Ruby courses. Uh, they're interested in potentially using uh, the... Uh, Studio web system. So there's my little plug. Um, anyway, so what about Ruby? Um, it's an interesting language. I'm still a big advocate of. Uh, I'm still a big advocate of PHP. I think it's. Uh, if you had to choose a particular language, I would choose that. Not necessarily because PHP is a superior programming language, but more because it's. Uh, you know big community, lots of projects are in PHP, lots of forums, WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, and a lot of shopping cart uh, packages out there, so on. Just PHP is a, it's much more widely used, you know. Insofar as the uh, languages themselves are concerned, Ruby versus PHP, um, Ruby is more sophisticated in certain regards, doesn't mean it's you're going to be more productive with it. It's just it's because it's a totally oriented, object-oriented language. Everything's an object in in Ruby, so that gives you a certain amount of flexibility and power. PHP's flexibility has to do with the fact that it's not purely object or object-oriented. Ironically, it's that procedural interface gives it some flexibility. But I've covered this in other videos. The point of this video blog is just to. I just want to show you a couple of quick things with regards to Ruby. Um, in my production of the course, uh, I haven't done much Ruby programming, to be totally honest with you, in my uh, my career. I looked at it many years ago. We considered it for a project we were working on, but at the time, uh, Ruby's infrastructure was immature relative to PHP, so I decided to go with PHP. Although we did produce a site monitor application that worked quite well just in a few days with Ruby and it's basically an application that w was designed to run on you know our home computers various laptops and it would it would monitor our sites and check to see if any of them went down and it would send an email to uh, to uh, to whatever email address we wanted to it was pretty good and I think I might put that back on again it seems you know we, we have dedicated servers and we pay for um, technical support and, 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 and management, and you know, we so our servers are sitting at some big location, but we still often have to, I, you know, unfortunately, have to call them and say, "Hey, for some reason, the server is not responding." I, you know, bothers me that I have to do that, but that's another story. Um, and I pay for support, you know. But generally speaking, I'm not going to diss the people I work with. They're really good. It's just that that's the one little issue that bothers me. So maybe the site monitor might come in handy and dig up that code base. Anyhow, um, so in preparation for the courses, for this Ruby course I'm producing, rather, um, I'm always looking at multiple sources of information. So the first thing I do is I check around, and I read a lot, check out uh, other videos that are out there because I want to put something together that's better. And uh, so I always look around at different sources. And so right now for the Ruby course, I went to what most of the people in the Ruby community would consider the primary book. They call it the pickaxe book because it's got a pickaxe in the front. And it's a pretty thick book. 
So I'm going through this book and I'm learning more details about the language I did not know before. Uh, despite the fact that I am teaching the basics, I still like to really have a big picture understanding of things so I can narrow down on the important aspects of the language. I did do this with my JavaScript course, I do this with my PHP courses and, and uh, other things as well. Anyway, so um, on Mac OS, which I'm using now, Ruby actually comes built in. So I was going to give you a quick demonstration of that. So I'm going to launch the terminal here. And you see I've ran a few commands. So I'm just going to run a few things again. So first thing, we want to know what version of Ruby you have. So you just open up turn. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to exit this. Exit. Oop, I should write that right. It's one in the morning, so I'm, uh, so I'm going to exit it, and uh, so we can start fresh, so it looks all cool. So I should start it like this. So we're going to just go Ruby-V, and this tells us what version of Ruby are we running on the, uh, on the Mac OS. Now, as you see here, it's uh, Ruby 2.0, so that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty modern, actually. Yeah, here's the build. It tells you even what the build it is. So it's, it's it's a very modern Ruby, so it's it's more than good enough for our purposes. If you're using Windows, you have to ins explicitly install Ruby. Just go Ruby installer, and it's pretty simple, actually. And when I do the actual video courses, I'll be covering all this in detail. Um, so yeah, so now we know we have Ruby installed. Now, Ruby comes with something called Herb, which is... IRB, which is short for Interactive Ruby. So you just type in Herb and jumps us into Herb. So you see Herb main, blah, 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 blah. So basically now what we can do with Herb, Herb is just the Ruby interpreter. It allows you to fire off Ruby commands and, you know, get some responses. So it's a good, simple way to test things out and just get your, uh, your feet wet with Ruby. So let me start off with a simple Ruby command. Print and uh, Stefan is tired and needs a cut. No, not a kit. A cut. Does that work? All right. See, it outputs Stefan is tired and needs a cut. Now, it's sending out nil because we're, we're not returning anything, right? So, um, yeah, another interesting command is called puts. And Stefan is putting. All right. So, yeah, see, it does the same thing. Now, the difference between puts and prints is puts can can do um, something called, uh, I think it's called interpolation. Again, it's very late. You'll, you'll, if you get to know me, uh, as later, night, later at night it gets, my, my brain capacity just goes, I, I get dumber and dumber as I get tired. And uh, I've only had one coffee today. So anyway, so puts uh, can do certain things. So what's, um, you know, what, what else can we do here? Um, we could check to see what other aspects of uh, Ruby are installed on the computer. So let me exit Herb. And now I'm in the root again. So we just checked out Ruby, Ruby dash B. And I say, okay, we're, we're out of herb now. Um, so let's say I want to install Rails. I go Rails. Now, see, it, it's interesting. It's very friendly, this. See, it tells me something. Rails is uh, it's probably the most popular web application framework in the Ruby world. It's equivalent to um, uh, Laravel or the Zend framework, uh, et cetera. Um, so it says Rails is not currently installed on the system. To get the latest version, simply type in sudo gem install Rails. Now, let me explain this line. Now, a gem is basically just a Ruby package. Uh, that's it. It's just a package. And they organize them in gems. So you can, uh, and they got this big database where you can just type in a, a command, say gem install X package that you want. Rails happens to be one package. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Now sudo, now sudo is a is a Linux command and it basically says uh, take on the identity of another user. 
Let me back that up. It, that's true what I just said, but basically what sudo does allows you to override um, any security restrictions you might uh, get. Uh, it turns you into the super user, you know, super user do, you know, um, sudo. So let's say I want to install one package, one gem, gem is package, package is gem, in, in the Ruby world, something called Sinatra. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go install Sinatra. Ooh. Uh, yes, and I'll say usage install suffix. Okay, that's a mistake. It's actually gem. I got to tell it I want to install the gem, install Sinatra. Now, so, like I said, Sinatra is a web server. So now it's trying to go over the internet, it's going to try and install it, but we're going to get an error. And we'll see that in a few seconds here. So it's uh, error, here we go, error while executing gem. You don't have write permission for the library, Luby, Luby, library Ruby slash gems, blah, blah. So basically what's happening, the gem installer is trying to install this package over the internet into our Mac computer. The problem is, is that, um, that there's no write permission as a normal user in, um, in our Mac. So we have to override it using sudo. So we go sudo gem install Sinatra. Now, you're going to be installing this in the core Ruby directory that comes with Mac OS X. And some people might be going, wait, 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 you're going to mess things up. Maybe. You, so you could configure your computer to install your gem packages in another directory so and, and then run Ruby, a separate instance of Ruby elsewhere. But since Sinatra is not something that's already there, we install Sinatra, it's not going to conflict with anything, so we should be okay. So I just issued that a command, hit enter. Uh, I got to give my, my little password. I don't know if I wrote it out properly because I'm very tired now. Ah, see, it's fetching them. It's, now it's doing everything that it needs to do to install the Ruby Gem um, Sinatra, which is the uh, the web server. And why do we want to install Sinatra? Because it's a really easy way to start building real simple web apps with uh, Ruby, which I will be doing in my course. So that's it. That was my introduction to uh, Ruby on uh On uh, Mac OS, I'll be covering Windows. I'll be covering other things as well. And if you go to, uh, well, it'll be on YouTube, so a lot of stuff, but also on the uh, uh, the Killer Sites forum, the Beginners Ruby uh, sub forum. I will be putting in my little comments and discussions as I build out the course. If you're interested, and that's uh, pretty much it.